So I've reset my example again. Uh, and what we want to talk about in this video is mostly what can I make pointers to? And I think one of the key problems people have besides the notation with pointers is that your brain wants to think one step ahead of where you actually are. People might notice, for example, so in this, uh, the way it's been reset here, um, the variable Q now contains an arrow that points at Y. Q contains a pointer to Y. Could Q point to something else later? Well, yeah, we've seen already that we can change what a pointer points to over time. A lot of times, though, if I ask a question like, what is Q? People say 10, but it isn't. Q doesn't contain the value 10. Q doesn't contain a number at all. But it's natural for your brain to want to take one step further, to say, yeah, Q is an error point. Yeah, it's 10. No. Q is a, a, a set of directions. You can choose to follow them or not. If you follow them, you might end up at the number 10. Maybe not, who knows? Um, and one key thing about that is that that misconception is a bit of a problem. It can lead to lots of trouble when you're working with pointers to int, but it can be a real disaster when you have pointers to anything else. And so what we want to talk about in this video is what else can I point to besides ints? But our warm-up, task number seven, is I currently have it set up so that p points to x and q points to y. p contains the value of p is an arrow pointing at x. The value of q is an arrow pointing at y. What I want is for p to now point at y. So what I would normally write is p equals ampersand y. p equals arrow pointing at y. Notice, just like before, that I don't write star p. I want to change what's in this box here. So I write p equals ampersand y. Now I'm not allowed to do that. It says specifically using only the variables p and q. But let's see what happens. Let's see what effect I want. Okay, so x is 6, y is 10. But these two things, if I follow the arrows, both give me 10. Um, but I can't write this. I can't write p equals ampersand y. I want to make p contain an arrow pointing at y without using the name y. Do I have an arrow pointing at y anywhere in this program? Well, well, yeah. I mean, here. It's in the box q. In fact, if I look inside of q, the value of q is arrow pointing at y. And q is an int star. So I think, well, wait, couldn't I just write p equals q. Take whatever's in the box q, that is to say this arrow, and put it in the box p. And you might notice q, the value of q is an int star, the value of p is an int star. And so it is valid to assign an int star to an int star. And so the effect of this statement here oops, is to get rid of this, and then, q, and then p is set to contain an arrow pointing at y. So we'll try compiling and running this. And, uh, oh, yeah, there's a typo there. So we'll get rid of this extra key mashing that I did. Uh, we'll try that again. There we go. And we can see in this case, x is 6, y is 10. And if I start at p and follow an arrow, I get 10. If I start at q and follow an arrow, I get 10. OK, deep breath, task 8. Leaving everything else the way it is, and maybe touching up some of this line that got mangled here, okay. Leaving everything else the way it is, create a pointer z that points at q. So we know what it means to point at something. We want to write something equals ampersand q. But we can do this. q is a regular variable. It's got a strange value, but q is a regular variable. It has just as much of a right to have arrows pointing at it as x does or y does. So I should be allowed to make an arrow that points at q. Okay, and then I want to store it in a variable called z. So here's my variable z. All right, and I want to store into this variable an arrow that points at q. Maybe a little less of a sharp angle there. There we go. Um, OK, so I have an arrow pointing at q in this variable. OK, next question. What is the type of z? So if I want to create a pointer to a particular type, I take the type and I add a star to it. If I want to point at y, y is an int. So my pointers will have type int star. If I wanted to point at a float, well, I would use float star. In general, if you want to point at a particular value, you take the type of what you're pointing at and you add a star to the end. What is the type of q? It's int star. If I want to, if I want to point at q, I need to have a variable of type int star star, a pointer to, 
So let's read this from right to left. Pointer to, a pointer to, an int. And if I look at Z, that's exactly what it is. It's an arrow pointing at a place where I store an arrow pointing at an int. A pointer to, a pointer to, an int. So Z has type int star star. One key thing to remember is that the type of this expression here, ampersand q, arrow pointing at q, when I create a pointer to q, the result will have an extra star on its type. q is an int star, so an arrow pointing at q will be an int star star. That means that this right-hand side has type int star star. So it's reasonable to assign that to a variable z of type int star star. But it wouldn't be reasonable if instead I wrote this int z equals q, well that's saying take a pointer of one sort, an int star, a pointer to an int, and turn it into a pointer to a pointer to an int. Well, you can't do that. And it's better not to even try and read it out loud at that point because of all the times you say the word pointer. Instead, just make sure that the type of the thing on the right is exactly the same as the type of the thing on the left. And we can see here on task 8 in that commented out uh, print statement, we can see it says uh, print out the value of x, the value of y, the value of star p, start at p, follow an arrow, the value of star q, start at q, follow an arrow, and then this monstrosity, star star z. And you can see it again there. But we know that we can just read this from right to left. Start at z, follow an arrow, follow an arrow. And if I do that, if I start at z and I follow an arrow and then I follow an arrow, I get the number 10. Let's see what happens if I run this. We can see there it is, star p equals 10, star q equals 10, and star star z equals 10. Start at z, follow an arrow, follow an arrow. Now, if we scroll down and take a look at task number 9, assign 1000 to the variable y without using the name y. Now, you might notice on this diagram, we've got lots of different ways of getting to our variable y. So we could get there by starting at p and following an arrow. We could get there by starting at q and following an arrow. We could even get there by starting at z, following an arrow, and then following another arrow. We'll try a few options. So we'll start with that star p. Star p equals 1,000. So I start at p, I follow an arrow, and I set the result to equal the value 1,000. And we then uncomment the print statement that was there. Try it again. And there it is. The value of y is 1,000. And of course, all these things are 1,000 because they're just other names for y. Star p, star q, and star star z. We could also write star q equals 1,000 because that would start us here. Follow an arrow. We get there and set the value to 1,000. And then, just like before, we could also say star star z. Start at z, follow an arrow, follow an arrow, and then set the, wherever you end up, set that to the value 1000. We get the same result. Okay, task 10. Without using the name q, make the variable q point at x. So I am allowed to use the name x, but I'm not allowed to use the name q. I want to set something to equal an arrow pointing at x. So here we are, arrow pointing at x. We might also want to remind ourselves that this is an int star. Okay, but that makes sense because I want to eventually put that into this box, the box called q, which is of type int star. Okay, great, but what do I put on the left-hand side of this assignment statement? I want to somehow put this arrow pointing at x into the box called q, but I'm not allowed to use the name q. Do I have any other ways of getting to q? Well, yes, I can use z. If I start at z and I follow one arrow, that takes me to q. That's another name for q in the current context. Um, so let's see, I start at z, and I follow one arrow. And by this point, I mean, I imagine by now you've, you've uh, uh, resigned yourself to the amount of cryptic notation. I, I'm sure morale is not high on your end. And maybe seeing a statement like this, it's almost par for the course. Like, are there any other horrifying ways we can combine stars and ampersands? The key with a statement like this is to break it down into pieces and to verify as you go. We can verify that arrow pointing at x, x is an int, so an arrow pointing at it will be an int star. Okay, the right-hand side has type int star. Star z, star z, start at z, follow an arrow, 
where I end up? That's an int star. So the type of the thing on the left is also an int star. So that looks good. There's a lot of moving parts, but we can check at each step that the parts are all lining up. So we'll try running this. And we can see x is 6, y is still 1,000 from the previous task. Star p, I guess I should have updated my diagram. Um, star p, if I start at p and I follow an arrow, that equals 1,000. And then when I execute line 88, I, it says take an arrow pointing at x and store that wherever you end up if you start at z and follow one arrow. That would be here. So I'll draw that like that. All right, and then in our print statement, star q equals six. So if I start at q and I follow an arrow, I get six, no surprise. Star star z, so start at z, follow one arrow, follow another arrow, I get the value six. All right, we're almost done. You can see there it is, return zero. We only have one task left. Without using the names x or q, make the variable p also point at x. So I'm allowed to use the variable p, but I'm not allowed to use x or q. So I want to write p equals, and then, you know, arrow pointing at x. But I'm not allowed to say ampersand x, because it says you're not allowed to use the name x in the statement. And I'm not even allowed to write q. We already tried that. We wrote p equals q. I'm not allowed to do that here either but I need an arrow pointing at x. Can I get an arrow pointing at x without using the name x or the name q? And I notice, well, the box q does contain an arrow pointing at x. I just can't use it directly. But I could always start at z and follow an arrow to get to that box. So maybe if I try p equals star z, no, uppercase z, maybe that'll work. Let's try validating that. What is the type of star z? Well, I start at z, I follow an arrow, uh, it's an int star. Okay, so I've got on the right an int star. What is the type of p? Well, p is also an int star. Can I set an int star to equal an int star? Yes, I can. So this is a valid assignment. Now, whether it does what I expect is a question of, first, whether I can keep my diagram updated, and second, uh, I can always run it to verify that. So uh, p equals star z. If I start at z, I follow an arrow, I get this box. It contains an arrow pointing at x. Take that arrow pointing at x and store it inside of p. So I erase the current value of p, and it now contains an arrow pointing at x. And so I should expect, if I run the task 11 print statement, x equals 6, y equals 1,000, star p, well, let's see, start at p, follow an arrow, 6, star q, well, let's see, start at q, follow an arrow, 6, and star star z, start at z, follow an arrow, follow an arrow, they should all equal 6. And they do!